I want to invite you all to stand to your feet this morning. We're going to enter into worship. We've already had a great time in practice, so I can't imagine what it's going to be like today. And I want to invite you just to come down to the front and uh, worship with us. There's freedom in the house. Oh, God, my God, I seek you. I want to move when you move. You're more than I could long for. I search for you, you're an ocean to my soul, to my soul. Let's sing that first verse again. Oh God, my God, I see you, want to move when you move, you're more than For you, you're an ocean to my soul, to my soul. Your love is like a waterfall, waterfall, running wild and free. You hear my heart.
Your love is like a waterfall, waterfall, running wild and free. You hear my heart when I call, when I call, He calls to me. Your love is like a waterfall, waterfall, raining down on me. Raining down on me. Raining down on me. I think this morning we need to do a rain dance, don't you? Come on, a rain dance. We're asking God to come in like a flood this morning. Amen. We're asking God to send his rain and let his kingdom come and his will be done in this place today. I believe God's starting something this, this year in 2023. We're getting ready to see the flood, the flood of God's blessing, the flood of God's mercy, the flood of God's kingdom coming to earth. His kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So come on, just put on your dancing shoes. It's coming like a flood. Let's sing that a little bit more. It's coming like a flood. Dancing in the rain. Everything I've done is covered in rivers of grace. Amazing. It's coming like a flood. Dancing in the rain. I lift up my hands. Love never changes. Amazing, oh yeah. It's coming, it's coming like a flood, dancing in the rain. Everything I've done is covered in rivers of grace. Amazing. It's coming like a flood, dancing in the rain. I lift up my hands, your love never
choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. to pray to glorify glorify the name of all names nothing can stand against I choose to pray to glorify glorify the name of all names nothing can stand against I choose to pray Sin suffered as it. 
blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone will overcome. We're going to overcome. We will overcome by the blood.
I'm in no hurry. There is no place I'd rather be than here in your flame. I'm in no hurry. There is no place I'd rather be than here in your flame. I'm in no hurry. There is no place I'd rather be than here in your flame. I'm in no hurry. There is no place I'd rather be here in your flame. Oh, yes, Lord. I'm in no hurry. There is no place I'd rather be. I'd rather be here in your flame. I'm in no hurry. There is no place. I'd rather be here in your flame. I'm in no hurry. There is no place. I'd rather be here in your flame.
going it's a great song to sing but if well we want to be activated in that don't we today I thank you Lord I thank you Lord for the anointing of intercession that will be rising up that is rising up on the inside of every one of us Lord we have come into your presence corporately together and we thank you Lord that when we step into a corporate anointing I thank you Lord that you bind us together you bring us together in unity and I thank you first of all Lord it's to receive from you it's to give you praise it's it's a I just see it as a like this circle that's turning a cycle we give praise to him and he pours out to us so we just we say we're good receivers today right <laughs> We're good receivers and we're wonderful givers of his presence, of just giving him, saying he's worth it all. But Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, that we can pray in the spirit. The Bible says pray in the spirit and with the understanding. Can we just pray in the spirit and just see the unity of the spirit of what God wants to do in us and through us today? He a robo 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 si a raba 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 saya. He a robo 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 sheke dalama soya. He a robo shor raba 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 raba. He a robo soya. We throw off every weight that entangles us. Ho raba shiri andalala ya siya. He a robo soya. And I want to say that if you are here today. And you don't have the fullness of your prayer language. We don't say you have to. We say you get to, right? Just let the Holy Spirit bubble up on the inside of you and let it bubble out. Because there's strength that comes. There's, there's joy that comes, right? <laughs> there's peace that comes like a river rolling, rolling, rolling. So let it bubble up in your spirit today. Come on, we're a praying church. We're a worshiping church. Stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. There's much on the inside of you, but we have to stir it up. To, we can see that it will bubble up and we'll release it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. And I thank you, Lord, over everyone here today and those watching. I thank you for the increase of the clarity of the Spirit that we will walk in this year. I thank you, Lord, for the increase of dreams and visions. I thank you, Lord, for the revelation that we are receiving this year in a greater way, Lord. We just receive it. We say thank you, Lord, and we declare it in the name of Jesus. Just a minute longer. Just, I just feel like our spirits are getting just lined up, lined up, lined up. Even in worship, there can be many distractions and, and just different things going on. But Lord, we line our spirits up with you right now in the name of Jesus. We do thank you for the rain. We thank you for the rain. We thank you, Lord, not only for the natural rain, but Lord, we thank you for the spiritual rain. Would you saturate us today? Saturate me in your rain today. Just saturate, wash cleanse, purify. 
Thank you for the cleansing rain in this place today. Thank you for the cleansing rain, the rain, the rain. We welcome the rain today. We welcome the rain. We welcome the rain of your presence. We welcome the rain of your presence, Lord. I'm not in a hurry. There's no other place I'd rather be. Here in your presence. Come on, let's lift up holy hands to the Lord. Not in a hurry. There's no other place I'd rather be. Here in your love. Not in a hurry, there's not a place I'd rather be than here in your love. I'm not in a hurry, there's no place I'd rather be than here in your flame. I'm in no hurry, there's no place I'd rather be than here in your love. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. Thank you for your presence. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. Thank you for your No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. There's no place I would no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. So when my boys were small, my parents were still living in Florida. We would go to Florida every summer. And going to Florida meant there would be times we would go to Disney World. The happiest place on earth. When it was good. Right? <laughs> I have to put a disclaimer out on that now. Yeah, well, that's a while ago. Anyway, I was just, as we were singing this, no other place I'd rather be. I remember the joy that we felt, my children felt, as we stood in the room behind the doors before we went into the presentation. We were all gathered in there. If you've ever been, you know, they get you in these rooms. There's hundreds of people in the room. And they're behind. And on the other side of the doors is actually what you're going in for, right? But you're so excited. You're just happy to be in the room. Well, the spirit of religion just wants you to be happy to be in the room. Oh, come on. But God's saying, I want to open the doors yeah. and let you in. Hallelujah. I want you to come in deeper and further yes. than you've ever been before. I want yes. you to, to draw you in to a place Thank where there is Lord. pleasure like you've never experienced. Woo. In the presence of the Lord, there's joy forevermore. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I'm feeling that anticipation, that Thank joy you, that the doors are opening. We say, open up the doors. Yes. Let the King of glory in. Yes. We're, we're going King in after glory. the King. We're not in a hurry. There's no other place we'd rather be. Man, there's football games on today that millions of people are going to be watching. The Australian Open is final. The men's final is today. Millions of people around the world are watching it. But I'm telling you right now, and I hope you can make this declaration, there's no other place I'd rather be than here in your love. I'm not in a hurry. Yeah, thank you, Lord. There's no other place. Streams, streams. Pray through me, pray streams through me. Streams of refreshing me. that are being released pray into the room me, pray today. Pray through me, groan. Groan through me, groan through me. Groan through me, groan through me. Pray through me, pray through me. Let that We've river come of to life drink begin today. To flow. We've come to Let drink. Spring up with a place of overflowing today. A place of overflowing, bubbling joy, abundance in the house, the presence of the Lord. We love you. We love you. Come on, the doors are open, and we're going in. Doors are opening and we're going in. We're going in. We're 
going into the secret place. We're going into the throne room. We're coming before the King of glory, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We're here to worship you. We're here to worship you. A few songs ago, we sang in the song that we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Let's just, as we enter in, let's thank Him for His blood. Yes. Let's thank, thank Him that His blood, blood has made a way for us to approach Him. That His blood has made a way for us to come to Abba, to be part of the family. That we're no longer orphans. That He doesn't even see us as servants, but He calls us sons and daughters. And Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, calls us friend. Welcome, friends. Welcome into the glory. Welcome into the presence of the Lord. And in that presence, it's like oxygen for your soul. Breathe it in deep. It's healing every cell. I believe there's healing in His glory. Healing in your glory. Healing in your glory. There's people still here in the house that need a miracle. And today, God is saying, I'm going to do a miracle. I want to do a miracle. I'm in no hurry. There is no place I'd rather be than here in your flame. I'm in no hurry. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your flame. I'm in no hurry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your flame. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm in no hurry. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Remember. Uh, well, a minute ago I talked about a circle, but really it's it's more like a wheel, and that wheel is turning by our hunger and our giving Him our praise and receiving. It's just a wheel that's turning, and as we lift our praise to Him and we receive, that's this is how we move forward in the Spirit. This is how we get the momentum to go forward in the kingdom. So we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and we receive from you. Yes. The second part of that scripture, we come in by the blood of the lamb. The second is also exciting and it's important. The word, they overcame by the word of their testimony. I'm so excited. There's some testimonies in the house. And I want to start with one right now from our very dear Francis. Francis was in the hospital the last time I saw her. Francis, come on up here. I want you to just give this testimony of what the Lord has done for you. We First of all, we say we love you. And we have been praying for you. We're so happy. You look so beautiful, so healthy, so restored. I am restored. I sit back there quietly most of the time and I don't say anything much and I don't really feel like I do much but I do love you oh, and I do you. pray for this church thank you. and I want to thank you right now for praying for me for this recovery I bless you and praise you Thank you so much. And I hope that I don't take too long. No, but the Lord has said to me, it's too long. You've sat back. You haven't shared. You haven't told them all the wonderful blessings that I've given to you all these years. His faithfulness is the most incredible thing we ever, ever know about. He's been so faithful to me all these years. I'll soon be 90 years old. <laughs> but all those years he's been with me, even when I didn't know him. But in 1967, I, I was blessed with the Holy Spirit coming into my life. It was through an incredible encounter with the um, David Wilkerson, before he ever came to Lindale. Anyway, I was blessed over the years with a good family. 
I had a wonderful husband, a godly man. I was blessed with four precious children. And during the time that we raised them, I was able to share with my children the things that the Lord gave. He taught so many things. He taught all the big and the little things. Little things from a splinter in your thumb to some of the big things. The big things were the loss of my mother, my sister, and my husband within a couple of years. It was a hard time. It was rough. But God in his faithfulness kept me going. He gave me the Jeremiah 29 11. I know the plans I have for you. And I hung on to those for many years. He also said in the scripture that he would be the husband to the widow. And he has been for all these many years, nearly 40 years. He's been my husband. He's cared for me. He's watched over me. He's protected me and provided for me just like my earthly husband did, only better. This has been a wonderful time of being here. And a few weeks ago when I found myself faced with being double, having double pneumonia, it was really tough. And Pastor, you had some words for me when you came to the ER. And I don't know whether I have them correctly or not, but you kept saying it's not over. And that's what I've kept hearing. It's not over yet. So it's not over yet for me, for however long he has me here. I will stop hiding the things that he's, that he's given and done for me. So you may see me again. His, in his faithfulness, while I was in the hospital, he again sent one of his angels. One night, when I was cold, one of his angels brought me some warm blankets and wonderful, wonderful experience. The next morning, that angel was here to protect me, to watch over me, to take care of me. She prayed with me, she prayed for me, she shared with me. And finally, she told me that the church was praying for me and that her name was Melinda. Thank you. So thank you for allowing me to share a few things with my heart. I bless you and praise you. And I want us to glorify the Lord. He is wonderful. He is gracious. He's blessing. He's everything that yes. we could ever even imagine. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Francis, just stay with me a minute. We just seal. It's not over. It's only just begun. And I just want to just prophesy over you that the glory of the latter will be greater than the former. That even what God has for you in the coming days will be greater than all you've seen. In all the things that he's done, God's saving the best for last. And it's time for your voice to be heard. Amen. We declare you are a mother in this house, and we honor you and we love you. You have earned every part of wisdom through your walking with Jesus all these years. And we need that. We need you. And we do love you so much. I want to tell you while you're standing here, Friday night we had... Our Koreans come, and several of us were here. It was so glorious. And I was trying to put into words what I was feeling. There was an elegance. But later, of course, you always think of stuff later, right? Later, I really discerned what, what I was feeling, that God was bringing a pure stream, a pure stream back to Bethesda that life has a way of muddying the waters. Life has a way of distracting us from 
sometimes our first purpose and our first love. But the Koreans brought in such purity. It just bathed us. And you carry that same thing. As you stand here and speak, I just feel pure water just pouring out over us. So I just pray for every one of us in the house that today would be a day, a new beginning of cleansing, cleansing flow of Jesus' presence, the, the flow that he brings to cleanse us and to, and to purify us. There are people here today that are ready for the refreshing that God has. You've been battle-worn, battle-weary, but the Lord is refreshing today. And just as he sent Melinda into your room, Holy Spirit is in this room today. The angels of the Lord are all over. I was trying to figure out because you're the kind of person an angel would really come to. (laughs) But the angels of the Lord are here today, the presence. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. can feel his power and his grace. I feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. You know, for those of you that are our age and and up and down, you remember the season of scripture songs like Surely the Presence of the Lord. There was something pure about that season that I want for this season. And here's good news. The Lord said to us that he's bringing all of the anointings and all of the mantles of every move of God into this new season. There's going to be holiness in this season. There's going to be victory in this season. There's going to be life in this season. Barrenness is broken off of this season. One of the things that our Koreans said to us, and it was, can you stand a little bit longer with me? I'm just getting something from you right now. I'm drawing out from you. Yeah, you might have to hold me up in a minute. The, the Koreans said, we don't follow this, but it was interesting that this is the year of the rabbit. And I thought, well, what is that? I'm thinking Bugs Bunny, you know. What does that mean? And she said, rabbits multiply. They birth many, many, many rabbits. It's not an accident, Jason, that you and your family are here today because we love these little girls, Paisley and I can't remember all of your names, but I know all of your faces, and I love you so much. We had a baptism service a couple of months ago, and uh, Kaylee was baptized, and Paisley said, I want to get baptized. I said, well, let's wait next time. You can get baptized. There's something really beautiful what God is doing. And here's what I want to say. you got to let the, the water and the rain just flush away all the disappointment of the past all the woundedness of the past you know when athletes get hurt many times they've got to get into a cold ice cold tub (laughs) it's so cold but it restores and i feel that today god's the rain is just in the natural is just what he's doing in the spirit today refreshing time this month of January, we're in the last week of Sunday of January now. I can't believe it. I go out and buy those calendars every year for my office desk. And every year, I just keep ripping them off. It just seems to fly by. Time seems to be moving faster than it ever has, at least for me. But I'm telling you, there's something God is doing. Something has been released. We used to say something is coming, but it's already been released. And it's, it's already here. We're, we're beginning to, to see and sense the arrival. We, we describe revival very simply here. Revival is his arrival. We say, come Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Jesus, Lord Jesus, come. My background is Moravian. My father was Moravian in North Carolina. And the Moravian prayer is, come Lord Jesus, our guest to be. Well, he's more than a guest, amen. He's head of this house. He's head of this church. 
He's head of my life. Come on, just make that declaration. He's head of my life. Francis, thank you so much. Uh, Jerry, would you just come and help her back to her seat? I know you're fine, but Jerry's so handsome. <laughs> Trina, come on up here. Trina came in the door and said, I've got a testimony. Do you know that testimony is a form of worship? Your testimony, it's giving God glory. And at the same time, not only is it giving God glory, it's releasing faith. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. It's releasing faith into your heart. What you hear he's done for Francis. Lord, let me live into my 90s to be as gracious and pure and filled with the Holy Spirit as Francis. Amen. We testify. We testify of the goodness of the Lord. What does it say in Psalms? I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So, um, it's probably been about a five-year journey for me of a progression of healing. About five years, I injured my knee when I went to see a bone doctor. They said I absolutely had no cartilage left and I would have to have total knee replacements in both knees. And I think within the week, or I think that week keith our, our neighbors were gracious gave me all kinds of equipment and keith wheeled me in a wheelchair to church and i got prayer and i was actually able to start walking and and they kind of put it off because they said well they only last 15 or 20 years you're a little too young so we don't want to do it yet and so i was like well <laughs> i don't want it either and so um god made it so that I could actually start walking again and I took a job for about three years that was a little more sedentary because I wasn't on my feet when God moved us but there was like 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 for Camilla there's a progression of healing that you're not completely healed but you've, you're walking along the road and so um, so I did this job and when God moved us to Texas God put in the grid of my job search, which was in Dallas, a 50 mile radius, he put Tyler in there. And I didn't know the towns and I asked my friends, where's Tyler, is that, that by Plano or Kenny? And they said, no, it's way over here. And I was like, wow, how did that 50 mile search get in there? So this job I was looking at, I had to be on my feet and work 12 hour shift at the hospital. And I was like, huh, <laughs> that's interesting. But by faith, I was like, okay, God, at least I could try it. And not a lot of faith, but at least I could try it. I've been at that job for two years now. And, um, and sometimes I work 10, 12, 14 hours straight. You're and a nurse. Uh, You're a nurse. I'm a nurse. And uh, about a year ago, I started wear wearing braces. And sometimes I won't wear them, but the days that I don't wear them, that day or the next day I will be in a lot of pain so I don't know I don't know when I started wearing braces but I can wear not go a few hours without them but it usually causes me discomfort so on Sunday last Sunday the gentleman that had the testimony with his wife I don't remember his name that he prayed for me and I don't know how many times I've come up and kept giving prayer for my knees because they weren't completely healed yet you know I knew I wasn't as bad as I was because I'm able to do this job but sometimes by the end of a long time they'd hurt and so I had gotten prayer again and at uh, sometimes I'll putz around at home and go a few hours without wearing my braces and then over the next couple of days I was like I haven't had my braces on Hi. and so it was just like okay this is it this is the test because I go to work tomorrow and I'm gonna be on my feet for 12 hours. And so I had to like, there was a testing, okay, God, are you really that good that now is finally my time? I've gone three, three shifts now, no braces. I have not wore them. I have not been in pain and I'm not hurting the next day. My knees are healed. It's been a progression, but I ain't wearing braces anymore. It's been a week. I haven't worn them since Sunday. That's wonderful. So praise God. So, 
There's somebody watching today, I believe. And there's people in the house right back in the back and right here on the front. Two wonderful women. First of all, the Lord gave me this word for you and for all of you that he, uh, he wants us to encounter him in the journey and realize that we're on our way. The destination is not that far. But to encounter him in the journey. Don't let the journey destroy you. Let the journey propel you to the destination he has. Something it just takes a lot of faith on the journey to not see it happen. But the Bible says, ask and keep on asking. The tense of the Greek there is continuous. Ask, keep asking, knock, keep knocking, seek, keep seeking. Because you're on a journey, but you're on a journey with Jesus. Amen. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. I'm feeling a little pain in my right knee right now, so I'm just going to release. Somebody's getting healed in their right knee right now, their right knee. But I want you to pray for the restoration, supernatural restoration of cartilage to the knees. I know that Francis and Pamela have both been told you, the only thing that's going to help you is replacements. But we're asking God for a divine replacement, a supernatural creative miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord God, we thank you that you are the great physician. Yes, you are. You are the God of the supernatural, Lord God. And I thank you what you have done for me that you could do for others, Lord God. You are not a respecter of person, Lord God. So we speak to these knees, Lord God. We speak for restoration, restoration of cartilage, restoration of bone, Lord God, you know all that is needed and nothing is too difficult for right. you, Lord God. That's right. We command pain to go, Lord God. We, we command every hindrance that would hold us back because, Lord God, you are God of supernatural, supernatural health, Hallelujah. supernatural youth. What is coming this year, we want to be able, Hallelujah. we want to be prepared that we are moving forward and we are not going to let these hindrances hold us back because we can't be mobile, Lord God. That's right. You're strengthening us, That's body, right. That's soul, right. That's spirit, right. That's right. that we are ready for this time and we are seeing your glory manifest on this earth. Hallelujah. Thank you. That last bit of your prayer, I think, went right to joy. Joy, I just prophesied mobility. Mobility, because you're going to nations, Joy. You need to go to nations, and God's going to give you the mobility. Amen? Joy, I want you to come and give a testimony, because you've been one. I've been close enough to know that through the month of January, you've been fasting and seeking the Lord. So I just, what, is, what, what encounters, what has God said to you in this month of fasting and praying? You can talk about your dad. Okay. And you receive your healing too yes. in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Um, okay, so I'll just kind of, first I want to say thank you to everybody that's in the prayer emails. I needed it this last week more than I can express. And if I could, I'd take you all out to dinner, but I can't. So, but anyway, I took my dad to the doctor just for follow-up to his surgery in, on December 16th, on Monday, but the 23rd, and we were sitting in the doctor's office planning where we were going to stop and eat, and I'm sitting there going, I, can't, I don't want to tell him I'm fasting, and he wants to go to IHOP. So then the, you know, we tell the doctor a little bit of stuff that's going on, they come back in and say, oh, you can't leave. You have to stay. You need surgery immediately. If I tell you I freaked out, that does not describe what happened to me. I just lost it. And um, so I ended up staying in Dallas. All I had was what I had on and my purse. My dad, he was like, well, if I got to stay, I got to stay. So my job was gracious and let me have the week off. But God blessed me in such a way, every time I would send a prayer and say, pray for this, this is what's going on, I put my phone down, I'd look up, somebody's coming in the door with the answer to that prayer. Oh. So it was like before I asked, he answered. It happened so many times. My dad was about to lose his leg, and we didn't even realize it because the blood flow to his right leg was so compromised. They could barely find pulses in his right foot. So it was more serious than we ever imagined what was going on. So I'm back. He's back. He, um, I'll tell you a little funny thing that happened. When my dad is 
coming out of anesthesia. He is the happiest man alive. And he's like, I feel so good. Well, the people were not used to that part of his personality. So when he was acting like that, they go rushing by. They thought he had had a stroke. And they did a CAT scan to check his brain. But it was just him on anesthesia. He's very, very cute, very sweet. Lakeisha knows she, she experienced it one time, you know. But um, God has just been really gracious because I've had a lot of changes already, and it's not even the end of the month. Um, the Lord, I kept asking the Lord, I want to play the piano. I just want to sit down and play the piano. And in November, he just finally said, then sit down in front of a piano. And so I did. And so for the first time, I led worship at our hop yesterday morning for an hour on the piano by myself. In the key of G. In the key of G. That's the only key I know. If it's not in G, I'm not playing it. Are you guys so, in G right now? Oh, we might have to go up and help Joel. So, but anyway, I just, I'm just, I just really feel like the Lord is doing some changes in people this year things that you've been asking for he's answering it but the only thing is we have to sit down in front of that piano we have to take that step we can't just say okay just bring it just bring it just bring it i feel like the lord's really saying we need to take the action that he wants us to take to get it going it's like our saying okay lord i'm ready and you take that step. When you're standing in the room, you have to go in the room to be able to get to the next door. Like you were saying, we got to get in the room and we got to be expectant. So keep your expectators on today because we need to be expectant for what God is going to do this year because it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Look for changes. Expect changes. So, Father, I just going to pray. I thank you, Lord, <laughs> that this year is going to be the year of years, Lord God, and that there are going to be profound changes in lives this year, Lord God. It's not status quo Christianity. It's not same old, same old. But Lord, you are doing something new, something fantastic. And Lord, we look forward to what you're going to do in us, with us, and through us. We thank you for the harvest. We thank you for those babies coming in. We thank you, Lord God, for the increase of your presence, your glory, and your passion in us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Joy. Wow. Man, there's a sweet presence of the Lord here today. You remember in Jewish custom, weddings were always held on the third day. Because the third day was considered twice blessed. It's a double portion. And the Lord is saying this year is a double portion year. Get ready for restoration. Get ready for God to do things that you've been asking Him to do. We're going to go into that a little bit in the message, but... One thing I wanted to do before we go any, we said we're not in a hurry today. We're not. We're not nervous about anything. We just love being in the glory. I love coming to this church because I know that you want the same things I want. You want to worship the King. You want to come into the presence of Abba. You want to welcome Holy Spirit. And then what He deposits in us, we're going to carry all week long, every day, everywhere all the time 24 7 amen praise the lord just feel like again i just feel like this altar is extra anointed right now i'm on this i don't know which mic i'm on <laughs> give me two mics i'm on this one um i'm also the sound man so i can't tell him to turn me up <laughs> um I said to Justin, I felt like we were going to just have a throne room encounter this morning. Justin had already planned some of these songs, and I wanted to sing this little medley he has. But what I really want to ask is if you'd be willing to just join me, and let's just get around this altar. I said on Friday night to the Koreans, when I first came, this platform did not exist. This sanctuary was nothing like it is now. 
But we did have the upper stage. And then the podium was sitting on a small little island, just, uh, just enough for one person to stand. And I said, no, I feel like we want to build something. And I said back then, I said, one day we're going to have the dancers dancing on this stage. And that's, we saw that Friday night again, all those beautiful dancers. But the other thing that we value here is the altar. It's not any more anointed than where you sit because God is where you are. Amen. But there's something that Joy said again. It's just something, an activation to step into the glory or to step into the river. There's so many things in the word that, are, that, we're, that we're told, you know. Ezekiel said everything the river touches will live. Well, the river is here right through this area right here. We've seen it over and over. We've had so many prophetic words from evangelists and ministries. A deep well of revival, a house of glory right here in this area. That's why I'm not trying to stand in the middle of everything, but I want to stand in the middle of the glory, in the middle of the river of God. Amen. So we're going to, we're going to, I'm just going to ask us to stand, if you will, again. Justin's going to lead us in this prayer. And if you're comfortable and if you're willing, just want you to come close to the altar for just a few moments. We might kneel, whatever position you want to take. Let's just have an intimate time for the next few minutes with the Lord.
Lord, we feel your embrace right now. Just let him embrace you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Helen's going to come in, the, in this moment and just give another testimony. I couldn't hold it in. I've waited too long. Just like Francis, sometimes we, we hold it in instead of releasing it because when people hear... What God is doing, I believe it, it gives them courage, gives them faith. So I am full, and as many of you know, I've been walking with the Lord uh, by His grace and by faith for about, I think it's going 30 to 40 years. And I'm like that uh, commercial that says, we've seen a thing or two, so we know a thing or two. I don't know, I think it's farmer's insurance. But when you walk with the Lord, you're going to know a thing or two. You're going to know about his faithfulness. And so y'all often hear me encourage you and exhort you about standing in the gap for your family and not going by what you see, but keep your eyes on the promise. So God has been moving again. Y'all have heard about my granddaughter, Mariah, who wanted to, was pursuing modeling and the Lord got a hold of her heart and said, pursue me. And she's going to a Bible college in Dallas, Christ for the Nations. And she's on this Holy Ghost, I call it hip hop. She starts in Trinity Church in Cedar Hill on one night and she goes to a service there and then she goes to Upper Room and she's at Bible college, they have chapel every day. And then she goes to her church on Sunday. This is a young person on fire for the Lord, seeking the presence of God. She called me and she said, Nana, I've got a class and I have to, as part of my project, they want me to find a mentor. She says, will you be my mentor? <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. I get to pour into my seed and let her know every trial, every disappointment, Every pain, every time of darkness, every victory, times of prosperity, the good and the bad that God has walked me through. And I told her as we were going down the hiking trail and it was, I was clearing the way, I said, I'm ahead and you just follow me as I follow Christ. I'm going to show you. I'm, I've got my eyes on Jesus and I'm going to show you how I made it. Her grandmother on her dad's side passed away. And my daughter called me and she says, Mom, they're just going to have like a viewing and they need somebody to speak words of comfort to this family because they were not at that time connected to a church. It's so important that we get connected, Pastor, because when we do go through something, we need to be able to call the pastor and the pastor needs to know us so he'll know what to say, at the, right? Isn't that how it works? And a lot of people, they don't get connected. And so they, somebody passes away and people are like, well, what do we say? What do we say? But I, I said, you know what? God's going to give me what to say. And she invited me, Pastor, to go and to share words of comfort and to lead the family in prayer. I said, praise the Lord. I get an opportunity to speak into their lives and say, your mother already left the blueprint of what was important in her life and it was God God first yes. family and faith so God gave me another opportunity to sow the seed of God's word and to call people back that have gotten Bethany, have gone Bethany, astray Bethany, that once Bethany. walked with the Lord have you ever walked with the Lord and then just kind of got you know got gone astray or you know someone they've just kind of gone back 
God wants us to call them and say, it's time to seek the Lord again. Mm -hmm. It's time. Well, then I have another granddaughter and she's been battling anxiety and fear. And she's been running to the doctor and running to the hospital. And this is gonna be exhortation and testimony. Oh, I gotta back up to that, speaking at that viewing. My daughter, she understands the principle of giving because I've taught it and I've modeled it. You see, we, as the head of the household, whether you're the husband, the wife, or a couple, your children can only follow where you lead them. We got to lead them the right way so they'll know where to go and who to put their hope in. The Bible says that we are to teach them who to put their hope in, and that is God. And so, you know, my husband and I, we, we have to depend on the Lord just like we all do about for our finances. I went out of the goodness of my heart because I care about people and I wanted to bring God to them. I didn't, I wasn't expecting anything. And so that's been a couple of weeks ago and my daughter calls me and what she doesn't know is, you know, rent is coming up and we needed just a little bit more. And I said, Lord, I don't know where that's going to come from. She calls me and she says, Mom, look on your cash app. I want to bless you. Oh. I want to sow seed into your life and in your ministry for being there for us. I said, honey, I, I, didn't, I didn't ask for anything. It's just out of my heart. But you know what? I couldn't stop her because you don't get a harvest unless you plant a seed. That's right. And she has a blessing coming because she is honoring her mother, honoring the Lord and what his word says. And I had to let her. And I prayed a blessing over her. I spoke blessings over her. I have no doubt in my mind. A hundredfold back because she gave. So my next granddaughter, anxiety and fear and running to the... I said, honey, you just got to run to the Lord. Well, her mama, which is my other daughter. Okay, I got several daughters. But I raised them up in the house of the Lord. And this daughter, her name is Christy, and she got baptized with the Holy Spirit when she was young. But she's gotten away. But she's watched me go to the house of the Lord. I believe in the local church. I believe, yes, I'm the, we're, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Yes, we're the temple of the Holy Spirit. But God still honors those places that are set aside and dedicated for his people to gather together, for worship, to be discipled, to encourage one another, to have a church family. You have a family, right? You know, we're here for each other. Y'all right. are here for me right. through right. what I'm going, stuff that I go through. Well, guess what? When my, when my daughter saw her daughter struggling with this fear and anxiety and going to the hospital, guess what? It all came back to her. She called her daughter up and says, we're going to the house of God down the street. Hallelujah. And she led my granddaughter and they went and the spirit of the Lord was there. The altar call was given and she went up there and the Holy Spirit touched her. I talked to her yesterday. She says, Nana, I'm doing a little mini Bible study. So here's what I want to say. This house and many other houses, churches, are there for us to come together to worship the Lord, to find God. But we've got to be the ones to lead so that our children know where to go. I told my husband the other day, I said, I'm a little concerned about a lot of Christians. You ask them where they're going today, they say, wherever the Lord leads me. Well, yes, he's going to lead you, but you should have a local body, that you, a church where you are rooted and grounded and you call home. Hey, I tell you what, my husband, he's got to come home and eat at my table. If he's out running around here and there and everywhere, he may not have a home after a while. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we all got to have that home. We, we got to have that place that we call home. Right? That's good. That's really and good. And I want to encourage you, this year, seek ye first the kingdom of God. All right. That's Get established it. in a church That's it, so that your kids, when they are needing to find God, they'll know where to run. My daughter didn't run down here. It's okay. 
there's another one in her city in her town that's good but my kids know Jesus is the answer and I'm encouraging you today to know God is faithful he's gonna provide your needs he wants to minister to you but we got to do our part that's, that's so a good. lot that's good Helen. God's been good yes he is he's good all the time and all the time God is good I just want to piggyback one thing on that. We were in a funeral Friday afternoon, and it was Camilla's sister's husband's father, so somebody very close to all of us. And at the end of the service, as the family gathered, they were all really touched and moved by the presence of the Lord. And Carissa just got bold, kind of like Helen right there. And she was telling her family, you all need to be in a church because this is the perfect example of what a family does. We come together and we stand together and we love each other. We help each other. We pray for each other. We care for each other. Everybody needs that. So when the world says you don't need that, it's a lie. We all need it. Camilla and I need it. We've received so much of your prayers as Camilla's walking on her journey to healing and complete total restoration. We need each other. And I tell you what, I just want to laugh at the lie that says that it's weakness to need. It's not weakness to need. We need the Lord. He created us to need Him. But then out of that need, we encounter Him and He gives us strength. And then he restores us. And then guess what we get to do? We get to go and do for others what the Lord's done for us. So many nurses in this church. Heather, Trisha, uh, Trina, and, and others. I know I'm Diane, Melinda. You guys, you, your, your profession, your vocation is caring and ministering. And, and that's what this is about. This is about that. We have another mother that we all love very much. Francis, can you come this way? Francis, I love it when the Holy Spirit moves in and just tenderly just massages our hearts. Ron, I'm thinking about you, the Holy Spirit just massaging your heart because you have so much to give. And the Lord wants to just heal and restore you back to that place because you are a great man of God, a great man of God so many gifts and you are a great woman of God we love you God is good I have to testify to all y'all anybody that's new to this church and is not quite sure whether you're going to stay here and join us I have to give honor to these pastors we are a family I love all y'all like they say in Texas She's from California. And hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. But now, you know, hey, <laughs> I'm in Texas, right? Anyway. <laughs> but I, these two people, they hear from God. Last year, they spoke a, a word over this house. And they proclaimed that last year was going to be a year of reconciliation. And I prayed about that all through the year because there were areas in my life and in my family life that needed reconciliation. Okay, in particular, my daughter, we had a fractured relationship, and I'm telling you, 25 years of a fractured relationship. There was even a 13-year per, uh, period where I didn't know where she was, and I didn't know where my grandchildren were. I had a six-year-old grandson and I did not know it because it was born during he was born during that period of time okay so I'm getting ready in October to go to California yay, to visit family right <laughs> and I'm sitting in my chair in my porch those of you who know me know that's one of my favorite places to pray is on my porch my back porch where I can see the birds and the trees and everything out there in the country and I'm sitting there and I'm saying Lord I'm going up into Northern California that's where my grandchildren live my daughter lives there my son lives there in their families and how's it gonna be God with Debbie my daughter how's it gonna be is she even gonna want to see us is she gonna talk to us 
And I says, and Lord, there's so many other things. And he just said, I'm going before you. I'm going before you. So I just want to give glory to God this morning. He went before us. My daughter was changed. My baby that was gone for so many years, during the time that she was separate from us, I would see her periodically. I did not recognize her, but she's back. She's back. She even looks different. She looks like she looked 15, 20 years ago before all this horror came into our lives where the enemy got in and separated from our family. Not only that, my nephew, my great nephew, he's my great nephew, and his father came out of a life of drugs. My nephew was a prodigal, brought up in the church. Uh, he attended so many church meetings. He, was a, he would be at lunch with us, little curly blonde hair and green eyes, speaking Spanish, <laughs> and always with grandma, always in church, always with, with mom. Mom's an evangelist in California. Then he went looking for his birth dad and got consumed by the life that his father lived, which was a life of drugs and separation from God. But he's back. He's and back. not only is his back, Papa came too. <laughs> <laughs> so great reconciliation in the family. So there are, now we get, we get pictures of them again, family pictures, and they're present. My daughter's present. Roman's present. His father is present. They're going on trips with the pastor. <laughs> I mean, praise God. Uh, he is an amazing God, and he's faithful. That word of reconciliation yes. happened in our lives. Thank you, Lord. And we just praise God for it. Thank we you, love Jesus. him. Thank you. Never stop. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is so good. Thank you, Jesus, for answered prayers. Thank you for moving in our lives and in our families. Don't you give up on your family. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for moving and our children and our grandchildren and some of you, your great-grandchildren. Do you see a theme today? We're hearing from the mothers in the house and I just love it. I absolutely love it. And it kind of goes along with the word about the rabbits <laughs> that we're going to be having lots of babies. You got to have lots of mamas to have lots of babies. And so, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for... Woo! We thank you, Lord, for continued healing and multiplication. Rabbits multiply. <laughs> so I thank you for the multiplication of miracles in this place. Multiplication for family, restoration and healing. Bringing your children to the Lord. Multiplication, multiplication, multiplication of salvation in your family, in your lives. If you're here today and you're not walking with Jesus, you don't know him, or maybe you know him, but you've been far away, you can get reconciled with him today. You can do it now. You don't have to stay uh, uh, at a distance. He loves you and he's with you and he wants to bring you close to him. So Lord, I thank you for the restoration and the healing and I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our families. And I thank you for the multiplication. This is a year of birthing. This is a year of birthing. Lord, we thank you for the year of birthing in Jesus' name. Stephen and I are going to have a new grandbaby this year. Woohoo! So I just thank you for that. <laughs> so I just thought, how fun for all the rabbits and all that. I'm actually, we're going to have a baby in the natural. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. God is so good and faithful. <laughs> yeah. And Thank you, waiting, Francis. And waiting. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes, we have, Francis. Anyway, I, just one last thing. The, I saw this house in the spirit when we were praying previously. I saw this house as a hive with bees buzzing around, coming to go, going, going out into the garden, which is 
you know, our life away Hallelujah. from this building as we minister wherever we minister and however we're connected in ministry. But I saw this hive and there weren't cells in there. It was solid, filled up to the top with the honey of the Holy Spirit. Ooh. Yeah, it's for us. Hey, it's for us. I got to add on that. I just found this out. I'm not really a trivia guy, but did you know honey is the only natural food that will never spoil? It's the only food that will not spoil. And it's used as an antiseptic. Yes. On wounds. Yeah. Uh huh. By people who don't have, are not privy to drugs. Sweet like honey on my lips. Come on, sing it with me. Sweet like honey on my lips. You're sweet, Lord. Sweet like honey on my lips. Sweet like honey on my lips. We want to taste and see that you are good. Once more. Sweet like honey on my lips. 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 Paisley has asked me now twice. Camille, are we going to dismiss the children? Who is our leader today? Wendy, you're doing double duty, so we have double portion for you today. When Miss Wendy's going to meet you and all of your sisters and all of the other children. I also want to say how happy I am to see. Um, I remembered when they walked in. Is it John and Greta? John? Greta? Tom, Tom. Tom and Greta from Switzerland and their beautiful family. They're back for a few months going through the YWAM School of Evangelism. If your children want to join us, then we're going to let our children go out today. So Paisley, you lead the way back to that door and meet Miss Wendy and Lexi and all of our beautiful children. Camilla, come make the announcements, but I want to say to the men, all right, men, fathers in the house, we're having our men's uh, uh, Saturday morning meeting uh, this coming Saturday morning. Do we have that up there? We're going to meet in the hub February the 4th at 10 a.m., and Bradley and I have decided after the meeting, whoever wants to go, we're going to go have lunch together. So Brad brought that up, and I said, I'm game. So Bradley, we're going to go to lunch. It was your idea, Bradley. I guess you get to pay that day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but, man, I hope you'll come. I also want to tell you that we're planning a men's retreat at the end of uh, March. So we have a little time. But we're going to be partnering with Pastor Randy Hill in Summit Church, Wiley, Texas, and uh, Pastor Chris Bauer with uh, New Covenant Church in Tyler, Tyler Metro Church, Pastor Jerry Phelps, and our church. Four men's groups are going to come together for a weekend of gathering the sons and the fathers. So it's going to be a great time. We're going to talk a lot more about that. But men, please, let's, let's start off the year this um, February with a great time together. We have a prayer team that meets before, but when we come in together at 10, we'll have worship. There'll be things that the Holy Spirit wants to do. And if you can stay, we'll go to lunch together on that day. Come on, Camilla. You make the announcements. Isn't this been great today? Yeah. I'm completely refreshed. I am too. I just looked at the clock. I was like, where is the time gone? I know. God wants me to Ooh. preach fast these days. Yeah, and I'm going to make announcements fast. And I want to say we are so blessed and honored to have some wonderful people right here on the second row. I'm going to call you out. <laughs> Jim and Pat Banks, we just bless them. They have moved into the area um, recently in the last several months. And uh, some of you will recognize their name or recognize, remember, that they have done the trauma prayer that we were passing around so much back in 2021, I think. And uh, anyway, I, I already love them and just excited about having them in this area. And we just welcome you today and we bless you and we thank God for your ministry. They have a healing ministry and they 
travel and, and have just national and international ministry, and we're just blessed to have you today, and we welcome you. And you know what, uh, <laughs> Jerry, do you have any of those first-timer cards? Um, I want you to give one to another first couple. This is Jason. Is it right? Jason and Cheryl. This is Paisley's mom and dad and all these beautiful girls. For We're the so first time. Happy to have yeah, them for the first we time. You today. Really happy to have you guys. Yeah. So just uh, just give them that card and you guys and give one to Jim and Pat. You guys, this is not ob 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 right over here. Did they get one? Somebody give them one. Obligatory. Yeah, How do you this say is, that this word? Is, if you if you fill this in and turn it back, then you get a free dinner with Brad. Brad will take you to <laughs> dinner <laughs> anyway. So I want to say really quickly, uh, we do have some wonderful prayer groups, text groups, and if you would like to be a part of that, I think we've got four. If you want to be a part of that in any way, you can let Joy know, and we just we send out, we stay busy sending out prayer requests all day long, it seems like. It's, it's a busy thing, but we're praying and we're seeing God move. And um, as Francis, as you were sharing your testimony, I, we were, I was just releasing that same healing to Richard Brewer, who's in the hospital with pneumonia, and we're just releasing that healing. Yes. Just like you got healed of pneumonia, we're releasing healing to him. Huh? Oh, he's coming home. Awesome. Well, that was quick. Thank you, Lord. Yes, so we, yeah, we'll just release healing even over our friend Sylvia who's watching online that has needed just a lot of healing and we just release that healing over you as you're watching and thanking God for victory in every area of your life in the name of Jesus. She lives in Oklahoma but joins us online so we welcome you today and we just release healing and wholeness to your body in the name of Jesus, spirit, soul, and body. Amen. 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 So um, one, one announcement I want to really highlight in this month of February. Fe well, we're not there yet, but we're soon getting there. Just February 19th, 18th and 19th. Nin yes. yes that's right. 18th and 19th. We are so blessed to partner with our friend Don Crum. And... Uh, have a, a really a declaration one nation under god is a real faith declaration isn't it and i want to say i don't know if you <laughs> realize that. it but there is no comma between one nation under god even in the pledge we're not separating our nation is under god amen amen so america's past and future we are prophesying into the future so Don, we're partnering with Don, and Don and Sherry will be with us, Captain Alan Clark, which is a great man we have not personally met, but we've heard wonderful things about him, and uh, they have long bios, so we're going to actually send something out to you that you can read in more detail about them. Our friend Ashley Thomas, who is uh, currently, she went to ORU, she's an amazing young woman that God has raised up in politics isn't that amazing a wonderful christian and she's currently i believe serving with uh, senator. senator ted cruz and um she's been a friend of ours now for a couple of years and we just love her and she is bright and will speak she is a truth pronouncer she will speak the truth she knows the law she is god is really raising her up so you don't want to miss and then um, Linda, which is Captain Clark's You can kind of see in the picture, yeah. she's dressed up like Esther or Deborah. She's going to be doing a presentation of the woman at the whale. Well, the whale. <laughs> now, I'm, I've been in East Texas too long myself. The woman at the well. And uh, it's, Don Crum said it is fabulous. So it's, it's going to be free, and we really want you guys to mark your calendars all day Saturday. Starting at 10, we'll break in groups. We'll go out and grab something to eat, come back at 2, and then come back again at 6. Yeah, so it's going to be a great weekend. Share, share, share with, with people that really have a, a, a desire to see, to pray for the nation. I know we'll be praying and doing a lot of intercession in the midst of that, and praying over our nation. So it's going to be exciting. More announcements and things to cover, but... I always say this, get, just make sure you sign up in the back and you can be on our weekly email list, which just lets you know 
as much as possible everything that's happening. Amen? So bless you today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're going to take our offering right now. So ushers, it's a fifth Sunday. I'm so excited. Every pastor in America is always excited to get an extra Sunday. You can imagine. Because there's so much for us to be able to do. There's so many opportunities to love, to give, to share, and to equip. And this is an equipping place. So we're giving our tithes, we're giving our offerings this morning. And uh, we're just going to say, Lord, thank you that you give us increase, that you help us, that you bless us with good jobs, that you give us uh, the finances, that we can now take that seed and give it back to you cheerfully with great expectation. We thank you. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm getting ready to do that. Uh, I'm going to try to manage the <laughs> 10 minutes I have. Hey, this will be a world record that I didn't preach two Sundays in a row and that I was ready and to preach. And I might not. I might say one or two little things. But uh, Justin, I want you to come down here. I hope. Can you get down here? I know you're wearing your brace today. Justin has an infection in his toe, but we're believing for a speedy and complete recovery. Don't come so fast, Justin, that you, that you fall. I just want to give Justin a few minutes. It's, it's important enough to us, to me. Justin and Deborah have been at this church from the moment we stepped in. We met them the first night that we were introduced to the leadership team of this church. And... Uh, we fell in love with Justin so quickly. He then was working in a, in a career. Uh, but not long after that, I, I just pulled on him and said, can you help us? So he, he came on staff with us. And through the revival especially, he was the, the man. We were burning the candle almost 24 <laughs> hours a day. He was yeah. here with us full time and working. Everything you see, the, the, the beauty of our campus, Justin has had a, a huge part in. Uh, we've mowed yards. We've, we've pil pulled weeds. We've tried to kill gophers. Killed gophers and laid bricks. And, and then the gophers try to get even. And Justin <laughs> is, he's a spiritual son, but he's also a brother. I mean, he's my little brother and mm -hmm. I love him. And I think he loves me. He can tell you that. Oh, I definitely love does. you. But, um, uh, a few weeks ago, uh, Justin is here now part-time and happy to serve the Lord part-time, but he deserves so much more. And I'm like, oh, I wish we could do more. I wish there was more uh, opportunity. But he was just so faithful, uh, even working part-time and never complaining, always faithful. Deborah, well, I want to thank you too when you let your husband serve the Lord and maybe not have the income he deserves or could potentially have. But God has always been so good. I've seen over and over the goodness of the Lord to Justin. So he came to me a few weeks ago, and I just want to give him a few minutes to tell you the journey that he's on and what the Lord's doing in his life. So um, I've always lived by Matthew 6.33. Uh, my entire adult life has been one of my key verses. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else you have need of, he'll add it to you. And he has been so faithful. Like Pastor said, when they first came, I was working a uh, 20-year career at Carrier Air Conditioning, uh, you know, making good money. But then that, that door closed. And I ended up going back to college, got my degree in computer networking, uh, did that for a little bit. And then I came here uh, full time. And uh, even in the midst of that, when, when things would get tight and money would get, you know, kind of tight, I, I would go to the Lord and I just, he just kept saying, trust me, wait. And literally I, I was over at the chapel one Friday morning and I was praying and I said, Lord, you know, uh, we're getting down to the to wire on some of this stuff. And, uh, I, you know, what do you want me to do? I'll go out and get a job. I'll dig ditches, whatever. I'm, you know, I'm willing to work and do whatever I need to do. And he told me, I want you to wait. And I was like, I don't want to wait. That's, that's not, it's not in a guy's nature to wait. We like to make things happen. But then he showed me something that up until that point I hadn't realized, that every job that I have had since I've been 18 years old has come to me, every single job. I've never had to go out and try to get a job, put out resumes, and, and all of that. 
And so uh, a week after God told me to wait, I literally got a phone call from a, a friend of mine who hired me. He came to me and said, hey, would you be willing to work part-time for me in IT? And I was like, well, sure. And uh, God just blessed us that way. Well, right before Christmas, I was up here one day with Quentin, and we were getting everything ready for the Sunday service, putting everything in the computer, and my phone rings, and it's a, a friend of mine that I grew up with in high school, and he's on the uh, Lindell Rural Water Board and has been for a couple of years. And he calls me up and he says, hey, listen. He said, they, they made this job for me because he's an IT guy. He said, but I can't, I can't take it. It's just not, it's not going to work for what I do. He said, and they asked him, do you know of anybody that would be able and willing to step in and do this job? And he said, I immediately thought of you. I was like, wow. Okay. Uh, and he said, and he told me how much they were all going to offer him. And I was like, ah, that's, that's quite a big salary compared to what, you know, I've been <laughs> making. And, and he said, well, he said, I really think that this is something that you might be interested in. Just, you know, talk to your wife, talk to your pastor, pray about it. And so I did. And, and over, it took about a month, but I finally, after meeting with the water board president uh, and, and finding out, you know, neat little things that we, we knew people together and, uh, so last Monday, I went to the water board meeting, their, their business meeting, and uh, sat in there for a little bit. They asked me to step out for about 15 minutes, and they came back in and said, welcome to Lindell Rural Water. <laughs> and it's a brand new journey. Uh, I'm excited about it. It's, it's similar to some of the things I've done in the past, but there's a lot that I haven't done. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the challenge and the, you know, the opportunity to help make this better and to, to provide uh, a better security for their water, for sure. And uh, the funny thing was, it's, it's been so God. Everything that I've asked for, they gave me. They didn't even negotiate. They just said, sure, we'll, we'll, we'll give you this salary. We'll give you these benefits. And I'm like, okay, wow. <laughs> and uh, so I'll start tomorrow. Uh, will be my first day. And uh, We'll just see where God takes this, and uh, it's, I, th I think it's going to be a great environment. Everybody there, as far as I know, are believers, and so just see, see what God does. So I won't be here during the day, but I still will be here. Uh, it won't change what I do as far as leading worship and being involved in ministry. So You heard him. You heard him. <laughs> I just won't be mowing the yard. We're going to have to get more teams. Yes. I want Chris to pray, and just, you just reach your hand out to Justin. Uh, again, I just see the word faithful over him and, and the reward and the blessing of the Lord. Uh, he's not telling you, but I will tell you, his salary has more than doubled. So we pray the double portion blessing over you this year. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, right now for Justin, Lord, and his servant heart, Lord, that he has. And, Lord, for what he means to this family, this house, Lord. Lord, so we just ask, Lord, that as he endeavors upon this new job, Lord, that you would just bless him, Lord, that you would place divine opportunities, Lord, in his path, Lord, that in every area of his life, Lord, that you would just increase, Lord, we just declare your abundance, Lord, yes. over him, Lord, yes. mind, body, and spirit. So, mm -hmm. Lord, we also declare, Lord, right now, Lord, the healing to his body and alignment, Lord, in his body. But, Lord, we thank you, Lord for this new opportunity, this direction, Lord, that you have placed, Lord, in his life, Lord. So, Lord, we just ask, Lord, that nothing would hold him back, Lord, That's right. as he goes forward, but, Lord, that you would open the doors wide, Lord, the doors of opportunity, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for Justin, Lord, and his family, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Yes, we do. We bless you, Justin, and he'll continue to lead worship, and he really is kind of the general of what happens here, and getting everything open and ready, but hey, this is a new year. It's, it's, it's time for the rabbits to multiply. Amen? So some of you men and women, if you're interested, you know, we need your help on the property with, with weeding and, and mowing and watering and all those kinds of things, you know. We've had such blessing over the years. It wasn't that many years ago that Richard Moran was so faithful to mow and take care of this whole property. He'd just come out and he'd be on the mower. Mike, you going to keep mowing with us? You're not quitting, are you? All right, Mike and, and others to help. We're going 
We're going to see the goodness of the Lord, but we're so excited. Uh, we rejoice with you. It, 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 it's, to me, it's really, there's a scripture that says anything that costs me nothing. You know, so this is, a, this is something I rejoice in. It's costing me, my partner, my armor bearer, but it's just going to be multiplied and, and rearranged a little bit. I'm so happy that Justin and Deborah are not going anywhere. Amen, Deborah? Amen, Deborah? <laughs> All right, I'm not going to preach my message, but I do want to introduce what I was going to get to at the very end of my message. And so if you'll put that picture up, we have a beautiful graphic made up for 2023. Justin said this is a life verse for him. It is for all for so many of us. Matthew 6:33 in 2023. And don't you notice that beautiful crown? Last Sunday we took that song and we brought a new melody. All hail the power of Jesus name and crown him Lord of all. This is a year for us to crown our king, to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and to take our crowns and lay them before his feet. Amen. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that royal crown that each one of us has, but seek first the kingdom. So this is going to be a theme throughout the year. The Lord's already given me. It's interesting that the word righteousness is 12 letters and the Lord's given me 12 themes that we're going to hit throughout the year that we're going to talk about the righteousness of God, the righteousness of our king. It's his righteousness that we seek, not ours. My righteousness is still, my own righteousness is still like filthy rags. But I have become the righteousness of my king. I have his righteousness, and I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Seek first the kingdom of God. We're going to be talking a lot more about what is the kingdom. I believe this year is initiating a new revelation to the body of Christ of what the kingdom looks like. We have a pretty good uh, understanding and revelation. Helen has a tremendous revelation on what local church, what the church is, what a family is. But this family is related to the kingdom. And we're going to find out how the church is going to relate to the kingdom, how God is going to put us together and and, 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 and knit us together like never before. I'm already starting to see it here locally, and the Lord's given me the, a, a great intention to reach out. I'm going to pastors in Athens and in Dallas and in Rusk and Jacksonville. I don't know why God's asking me to do it, but I'm just going into love and to preach this message that we're a kingdom. We need to start working together. We need to start working together in the kingdom. Stop being jealous. Stop being territorial. Stop trying to figure. We're asking the wrong question. In fact, in a kingdom, you never ask in a kingdom one another who's in charge. There's one king. So what we do is we concentrate on function. And we, we get an apostolic functioning going where we, we, we call on the, the gifts that God gives us. Pastor, prophet, apostle, evangelist, teachers. We call on those that God's given gifts of administration, gifts of miracles, gifts of healing. I'm telling you, I have a dream this year to instigate a regular Sunday morning healing service. Don Crum, who's a part of this church, and this is the One Nation Under God. Don said he saw a vision, a crystal clear vision of gurneys coming through these double doors coming from ambulances, being wheeled in so that this church would lay hands and pray for people. That they would have said on their way, being picked up by the ambulance drivers, the paramedics, where, where are we taking you? Did you know, I think legally, you have the, even if a University of Texas ambulance picks you up, if you say, I want to go to, to Christus Emergency Room in Lindale, that's where they'll take you. You tell them or somebody tell them where you want to go. I'm believing there's going to be a, a move of the Spirit through our healing rooms and through the cultures of Bethesda in the Bible where Jesus comes and he heals them all. Amen? Amen. And that we get that culture, that, that, that faith stirred up in our hearts and we say, we're going to have healing services and people are going to come in. People are going to say to their ambulance drivers, take me to Bethesda. Yeah. Take me to Bethesda. 
And we, look, we got the room. Wheel them in. I'm, I'm, these little closets over here, they're, they're kind of storage closets. During our revival in 2017 through 2019, we had crutches, wheelchairs, all kinds of medical supplies, walkers. People left them behind. Amen? Hallelujah! Can we believe for it? This is the year that the kingdom of God is going to increase. Talking to Don and Barb, they're already doing great ministry in the nursing homes in Mineola where they live. I said, will you help us get something started in Lindale? How many of you would help us go into our nursing homes and bring the gospel and bring the love of Jesus and just go in and let them know that they're loved, they're not forgotten. It's just a great ministry. And there's other ministries that are happening right here in our own city. Uh, the church just up the street from us, Pastor John Offit, Life Source. They're not even in church today. On a fifth Sunday, they go out and they do works of service. So they have teams that are ministering. They're doing things all over the region. It's just amazing. They, bring, they came in like on Saturday night to have their church, and then they've gone out today. So there's going to be methods and strategies that God's going to release when we seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. And then here's last but not least. Here's how good God is. He could simply say, you just worked for me now. I saved you and you're not going to hell. Way back in the day when I was young, one of my favorite musicians was a man named Andre Crouch. And he wrote a song that had such revelation. It said, if heaven never was promised to me, it's been good just serving the Lord. Something like that. I probably tore it up. But the gist of it was, even if I didn't have heaven, it would be worth it just knowing you, God. Just having you in my life, God. But heaven is promised. The best is yet to come. But I'm telling you, God is trying to get it through to us that his purpose for our life is to bring heaven to the earth. All the misery, all the destruction that the enemy has brought. Jesus said, I have come to destroy the works of the devil. Let's turn it around. Let's see God move in 2023 because we're going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And listen, here it is. Here's the, the blessing of it. If you read this in context, it's talking about not wonder, wondering about where you're going to live or what you're going to eat. All the things that are that are important to all of us. If you're going to get paid, if you're going to have a job, if your kids are going to make it through what they're going through. We announced we're getting ready to have a grandbaby, and we're so excited about that. Now we're praying every day for that baby, for, for Jennifer, our daughter-in-law. We're just praying, God, just keep, and you know, you just focus on those things. You love those things, but you're not consumed by them. Because I want to just put that in perspective. As much as those things are blessing, let those be a part of this promise. And all these things will be added to you. But you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen? Now, what's interesting, I don't want you to think this is a box. Here's the kingdom. You know, there's an old saying that I really hate, Jim. It's, it, it's those that are too heavenly minded and no earthly good. But I've met some people like that. But what I'm saying is when we are focused on the kingdom first, then we are more productive and much more useful to the Lord in the natural things because we're bringing heaven to earth. We're bringing what God is saying through the kingdom into every aspect of our life. So I'm not separating it. When I'm I'm using this example again. I'm seeking first the kingdom. I'm calling on my king, Jesus the healer, Jesus the provider, Jesus the one who uh, ministers to every need. Lord, would you touch Jennifer today? Bless her. Bless that baby in their first trimester. Let's let that baby grow strong. We got the sonogram just recently, the size of a gummy bear, little jelly bean. I told Jennifer when I saw her the next night, I saw the picture. I said, I've been craving jelly beans all day. <laughs> but I'm seeking first the kingdom. That means, let me, let, me, let me throw this out. That means no matter what's going on in my life, 
I pull it into the kingdom. I pull it into the kingdom. Jesus, you see this baby. Take care of this baby. Bless this baby. Bless this family. Bless my children. Bless my puppy dog. Bring it into the kingdom. Don't categorize it and keep it over here. But when you bring it into the kingdom, then God says, and all these things will be included. They'll be added in my kingdom and the blessings that I have for you. I want to say thank you to Karen Price. She watches sometimes. She's our graphic artist. And didn't she do just a beautiful job? You'll be seeing this all year on our information, on our emails. I'm gonna, I always print it out and put it on my desk, on my computer screens. All year, I'm going to be reminded, and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to remind us all, this is a year to seek his kingdom first. And to realize that as we bring everything to him, that all those things will be added as well. Don't don't worry. In the words of a great musical artist, don't you worry about a thing. Anybody know that song? All right. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful day. I just want you to know you missed a great sermon, but if you'll come back next Sunday, you might hear it. You just never know. Let's all stand up together. I want to say this from Jim in the back. He's standing at the door. If you didn't notice, he's wearing a bright red shirt. Jim, uh, under the shirt, you got another shirt. There it is. Lindale, native Lindalian. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is playing in a playoff game for the Kansas City Chiefs. The, from, well, he, his father and his parents are from Lindale. And then they moved to White House for Patrick to play a, in sports. But we claim him. We claim, we claim Patrick from Lindale, too. He started in Lindale. We're going to get in a fight over this, Heidi. Anyway. Anyway. Um, I I told Jim, I said, I can pull for the Chiefs now that the Cowboys are done. (laughs) So go Chiefs. And a great day for all of you. The only thing I want to say to my friend Ron Moyer, who is a great friend of YWAMR and from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Go 49ers. (laughs) Lord, we love you. (laughs) We bless you. We seek first the kingdom. Because when we look to you, you make everything beautiful. You make everything wonderful. You make life worth living. You help us to rise above all the junk. And you help us to see the gold and find the beauty, even in the ashes. We bless you today. We thank you for giving us such a sweet, sweet time in your presence with one another. I pray blessings over every home, every family, every person, and everyone watching today. And everyone said amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you Wednesday night for Upper Room Prayer.